is a move of God in this church. God is doing something very, very powerful even now. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm glad to tell you in between first word and this service in between our teaching of first word and now, we already had one filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost today. Gonna be baptized in Jesus' name. I think we ought to thank God for it. I needed rescued. My sin was heavy. Oh, but he called my name. I ran out of that grave. Can I say to you that last Sunday we had 21, amen, Spanish-speaking wonderful people of God in our service. Full were baptized in Jesus' name. One was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There's a revival at the anchor. There's a harvest in the end time. And I'm gonna tell you, he's still calling names. You're not too far for him to call your name. He knows where you're at. He knows what you need. He's an all-time God. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Would everybody lift your hands and lift your voices and begin to thank him for his goodness. Thank you for calling my name. Thank you for healing my mind. Thank you for touching my spirit. Thank you for setting me free. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for calling me out of darkness into your marvelous life. Would you clap your hands and thank God for his goodness? Oh, he's an all-time God. I said he's an all-time God. He's an all-time God. I said he comes right on time. He knows exactly what you need. Is there anybody thankful he came through for you? He brought you out. He brought you out. Go ahead and sing. Lift your hands in the building and love the Lord. Would you do that? Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voices. We want God's presence in this room. Lord, we want it to rain in this room today. Come on, every head, hand lifted, every heart open. Hallelujah. Let it rain. Come on, I want you to say, let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. How many feel that in the room right now? Prophets believe, prophets believe that what you see natural happen ends up happening spiritually. What you see in the natural becomes what you see in the spirit. We've got precious brothers already announced here today from Christian Life Center just a few weeks ago. I was in Stockton, California preaching. God gave me a word to preach. And I began to address the fact that California has had the three worst years of drought in its history. They have 17 reservoirs. The concern was because many of those were so depleted, they said it would take decades to fill back up. Decades to replenish. Three years of drought was fixed in one season, three month rain. One rain. Reservoirs are filled. They got more water than they need. They have to let the water out because they've got three times as much snow in the Sierra Mountains and it's melting because when God brings an abundance, I don't care how long it's been dry in your life, God's gonna fill it up. Come on, the parched ground shall become a pool. 
Hallelujah. It sounds like Mount Carmel to me. It sounds like an old-fashioned revival to me. And I'm glad to tell you on Wednesday night at the camp meeting, the man of God, he stopped and he said, I see rain in Zanesville. How many believe there's going to be rain right here in Zanesville? Would you clap your hands and shout, let it rain. Let it rain. Let it. Come on, one more time. Go ahead. Open the Everybody, lift your hands and say. I want you to grab your neighbor's hand, lift it in the air. I want you to declare and proclaim God's rain is going to come into this house today. He's going to rain into our families, He's going to rain into our emotions. Come on, there's going to be healing rain heaven rain. Lord, you're going to pour it out. Lord, there's going to be a revival among the atheists. There's going to be a prodigal revival. There's going to be a religious revival. There's going to be a hungry revival, a Gentile revival. Come on, that's it. Lift your voices right now. God is moving in this building. Hallelujah. Let it rain. Lord Jesus, let it rain. Open the floodgates this morning. Open the floodgates this morning. Come on, it's happening in this room right now. further to do we are so honored to have our guest evangelists with us we love them very much remain standing we are so glad to have evangelist Dylan Morgan and his precious wife Paris we're so glad they're here amen amen we we have them scheduled in September but they've got a baby that's going to come around that time and we wanted both of them to be able to come and, and not have to, and he at least not have to leave it in a, hurry, in a hurry. Amen. They travel. They're a blessing to the kingdom of God. We feel very connected to them in the spirit. We feel like God has called him here, amen, to minister to us today. And we're going to give them a big Zanesville welcome. Would you do that? Amen. We want him to come. Hallelujah. We also are so honored to have Pastor and Sister Castle with us. Amen. In the church of Woodsfield, they had some electrical issues, and they they couldn't have church today, but they said, we're going to come home to Zanesville. Aren't we glad to have them with us? Would you welcome them? Amen. Amen. Let's get behind the preacher today. Why don't you just lift your hands one more time all over this house? Why don't we just continue to entertain the beautiful presence of the Lord that's here. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Come on, lift your voices higher than your hands now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Man. You know, I firmly believe that God orchestrates days all the way back. I feel like he puts divine moments of connection together where he destines there to be a shifting in the atmosphere and a moment. And I feel like that's the day we're at right now. Anybody feel that there's just an atmospheric shift in the air? you Jesus man it is such an honor to be here <clears throat> I give honor to your pastor and your pastor's wife here today brother and sister bounds aren't you thankful for brother and sister bounds here amen I don't know many men of God that have had the impact that that man of God has had on me from afar and as I get to know him better and as the Lord has allowed us to get a little more connected, I can honestly say you are a blessed church. Amen. Amen. 
It's always an honor to have my wife with me, my much better half, whom I love and appreciate so very much. And I am so excited for the beautiful blessing that's on its way, baby Harlow. And uh, I just thank God for his blessings on our life. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 28. The book of Genesis chapter 28. I know uh, with a last name Morgan that you anticipate a long service. However, I do not anticipate being very long here today. And with the atmosphere that's already moving, I feel like we just need to speak the word and let the word do what it wants to do in this place. Amen. Genesis chapter 28, beginning at verse number 10. The Bible says, And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed a dream. And lo, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending. Somebody say the heavens were open. The angels of God were ascending and descending. And behold, the Lord stood above it. And said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac and the land wherein thou liest. To thee will I give it. And to thy seed and to thy seed shall be the dust of the earth and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again to this land for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee. And Jacob awoke out of his sleep and said, surely this is the Lord. The Lord is in this place and I knew it not. A few verses later, he calls that place Bethel, which is to say the house of God. I want to preach to you today something that I felt like the Lord showed me for this church. And I just want to preach the heavens are open. The heavens are open. Would you set your Bibles down and would you lift your hands one more time all over this house? And would you ask that God would have his will and his way in this service? Lord, I feel a unique touch upon my life today. Give me clarity to speak your word. Lord, I take dominion over anything that would be a hindrance against this service. The gifts of the Spirit are already working, God. I just pray that you would confirm this word with signs following. Would you lift your voice as anchor one more time? Come on. Come on, that's it. Come on, that's it. Lift your voices. Lift your voices. Lift your voices. Uh, Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. One more time, why don't you clap your hands and give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Amen. Amen. You can be seated in Jesus' name. Hell, by its ability, cannot create. Hell is not a creative being. Hell can only respond to what heaven is trying to create in an atmosphere. The very first thing we learn about God in the book of Genesis is this. In the beginning, God created. And so God, within his essence, within his being, he is a creative being. When God speaks, something is created. Isaiah said that when the word of the Lord goes forward, that it cannot return void, it shall accomplish that whither to it was sent. God in its essence, in, in, in everything that he is, is simply creative. 
if God spoke right now and said the sky is purple, because God cannot lie, immediately the sky would change its blue hue and it would become purple. Because when God speaks, it has to come to pass. Now, every spoken word of God is going to be met with a response from hell. Because hell responds to that which is being created from God. And so a lot of times when we are about to experience the fulfillment of the word of God, we see a response from hell that is meant to be a distraction from what God is trying to produce and create in the atmosphere. And a lot of times we get caught up in what hell is responding to instead of releasing what God is trying to create. I want to say to you today that before the heavens open, hell tries to respond and tries to distract and tries to deter you from the rain that is trying to fall. In the book of Genesis, in our text, you see that Jacob comes to the place called Bethel. The Bible says he lighted upon that place. That word lighted simply means that he reached that place. He made it to the place God intended for him to be. You have to realize that everything that happened to Jacob up until that point was trying to get him to reach that place. Everything that has happened to you was trying to bring you to this point with God today. I want to say to every guest that's here, you think you're here just because somebody invited you. You think you're here just because something happened and you're like, well, maybe if I can just get to the house of God, it'll get a little better. I want you to know that God destined this day for your life. I want to tell every saint of God that's here, I know it's just another Sunday to you, but it is not in the heavenlies. God has orchestrated this day. You have reached a certain place. One of the things that I saw this morning is this, is that right before Jacob reaches the certain place, the Bible says that Esau goes to Ishmael. That would be his uncle. That would be the son out of the flesh of Abraham. Abraham takes a wife, Hagar, Sarah's servant, and he has a son out of the flesh that is named Ishmael. It is Esau that the Bible says, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. You have two people that are a type of the flesh, Ishmael and Esau. And right before the heavens open in Jacob's life, the flesh has a meeting. You need to hear what I just said. The flesh comes together. It seems like the carnal always want to congregate right before the heavens open. I want to tell you that the response of the flesh is to always pull you away from an open heaven. But I'm here today to serve notice against carnality. We've got to allow it to die upon an altar. Anchor, I need you to hear me today. Uh, The carnality of our flesh uh, wants carnal things to come together right now uh, and distract us uh, from an open heaven. Uh, But I'm here today to tell you, uh, if you will get your eyes on what's important, uh, there will be a creative work uh, that God does today uh, that shifts the atmosphere uh, over this church. Come on, lift your hands from the front to the back. Lift your voice and give God a praise. Come on, I said give God a praise. Lift your hands. Come on, you've got to press against the flesh right now. You've got to push back against the carnality right now. Come on, we've got to press right here. 
Come on, I'm preaching to somebody. You woke up today and you're wondering why you thought the thoughts that you thought. You're wondering why you did the things that you did. The carnal things of life begin to press against you from the moment that your eyes opened until the moment that you walked into the house of God. That's because carnality always tries to press in right before the heavens open. You've got to press against the flesh right now. I feel the heavens over this place. I feel them opening over this place. I feel a shift in the supernatural. I see the rain. I feel the rain. Lift your hands and lift your voices and give God a praise of desire. Come on, come on, come on. From the front to the back, from the left to the right, let everything that hath breath praise. Come on, do you feel that? Do you feel that right now? I'm telling you there are miracles in this place. People are about to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. But you've got to get beyond the carnality. Come on, you got to turn the voices of negativity off right now. You've got to turn the voice of division off right now. You've got to turn the voice of everything that would pull you away of what the Holy Ghost is wanting to do in this season for this church. Mm. Come on, uh, there's a little pushback right now. I rebuke division in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, I rebuke it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, come on. The enemy always liked to sow tares right at harvest time. It is not the will of God right now. You've got to let that thing out of your ear. You've got to turn some things off right now. And you've got to tune in to the atmosphere of the church. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. I feel the heavens are open. So what I feel when I say this. Immediately we go right now. Well, this is just another preacher coming through prophesying good things. Hear me. It's the season. It's the hour. It's no coincidence that Brother Herring said what he said on Wednesday night. The rain. I see rain in Zanesville. I hear rain in Zanesville. Friday night I was worshiping in the middle of a powerful worship service and I closed my eyes and when I closed my eyes I saw the throne of God for the first time in my life I saw his throne I've been struck by it ever since I woke up so early on Saturday morning I woke up and I began to study about the throne I wanted to know what does the throne mean what does the throne look like this is what I've learned in the Old Testament during the tabernacle they had this thing called the Ark of the Covenant. Anybody ever heard of the Ark of the Covenant? That's where the glory of God fell. On top of the ark, they had a lid that had an angelic covering that was called the mercy seat. That was literally the throne of God. That's where God came down and his glory rested. But before they could ever get to glory, there was a process of death, burial, and a resurrection before you could ever get to the glory of God falling and him coming down on his throne. There was the process that God had to take them through. I've been praying and I feel it in the Holy Ghost today to tell you the process that has brought you to the throne. It was not easy. I realize this church has been through some things. I realize some things have happened, but hear me. If something doesn't die, then you cannot have glory and you cannot get to the throne. And I know something died. I know something was removed, but you've got to hear me in the Holy Ghost. It was to bring you to the throne of God. Come on, lift your voices. Lift your voices. Lift your voices. Come on, church, lift your voices. Ah. The throne. I see it in Ezekiel. The Bible says, I, Ezekiel, was by the river Chabar with the captives. You've got to hear that. He was among the captives. 
and he could have been consumed about his surroundings that he was with the captives but instead he changed his perspective instead of looking at what hell was producing he started trying to see what heaven was creating you can get all caught up with the negativity all around you or you can change your perspective today and see that the heavens are open Come on, I know you came sick and you want to look at your sickness. I know you came hurting and you want to look at the pain. I know you came broken and you're looking at the fragmented pieces of your life. But if you will look up right now, you will see the heavens have opened. Come on, do you feel that in the atmosphere? Can you feel the supernatural? He said, I saw the heavens open, and what did he see? But the throne of God. And when he saw the throne of God, he saw the angels, and those angels were there. Hear me, whenever the, the heavens open, the angelic is released. I said, when the heavens open, the angelic is released. John had the same thing while he was on the isle called Patmos. He could have been consumed with the fact that he was on exile. But instead of getting consumed with his current situation, he changed his perspective. Instead of getting consumed with what hell was responding to, I, John, was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Come on. You've got to get out of where you're at physically and look at where the things are at spiritually right now. The flesh wants to respond before the heavens do something great. So why is it that there are the works of the flesh on the earth like they are right now? Come on, read the book of Galatians when it talks about the works of the flesh. Everything, you are seeing everything that was listed in the book of Galatians, the work of the flesh, the work of the flesh, the work of the flesh. To every work of the flesh, there's a gift of the spirit. To every work of the flesh, there's a fruit of the spirit. And if you get caught up on what the works of the flesh are doing in the world, you will lose sight of the fact that God is trying to produce gifts and fruit in the same season. We will get so consumed in what the flesh is trying to produce, we will lose sight on what heaven is trying to create. And the flesh is responding to an open heaven. The flesh is pushing back to an open heaven. Hell's response should not intimidate you. It should put a fire in you. It should put a fight in you. It should put a grit. Come on, anchor. Get a little grit in your teeth. Get a little fight in your... Come on. Do you feel that? Holy boldness. Lift your hands and lift your voice. Come on, come on. Lift your voices. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Something is trying to break. I said something is trying to break. Would you lift your voices right now from the left to the right, from the front to the back. Lift your voices and praise him. Magnify him. Glorify him. Don't get quiet. Press here. Don't get quiet. Press here. Don't get quiet. Press here.
There were two dimensions that John stepped into in the book of Revelation. He gets in the spirit on the Lord's day, and he gets the revelation to the seven churches. But then there was another dimension. The revelation dimension is where God enlightened him on what he was doing in the seven churches. But then there was another dimension, Brother Bounds. And that was when he said, now come up. He said, now I'm not just going to give you revelation of where you're at. I'm going to bring you out of the circumstance that you're in. And he said, come up. And John came up a little higher. And he looked up and he saw a door open. And he went through the door. And what did he see but the throne of God? It's one thing to have a revelation of where you are. It's another thing to let God elevate you out of your circumstance. God doesn't want you just to leave here knowing where you're at. God wants you to leave here outside of the circumstance you've been in. You need to hear what I just said. You need to come up. You need to get caught up in the spirit and let him just... The point of revelation isn't the only place God has for you. He doesn't just want you to know where you're at. He wants to take you up higher to another dimension, to a new place. Come on, lift your voice. Come on, come on. Come on, do you feel that right now? That's another dimension. That's another level. That's a new time. The ceiling to the church is the floor of the heavenly. And so when we look up and see an open heaven, we see a ceiling. But that's God looking down from the ceiling of heaven. It's floor for him. Where we think we can never go is where God walks. That's the heavenly dimension. He doesn't want you just to remain looking up. He wants to take you out and let you walk and see things from another perspective. It's not his will for you to have the same perspective uh, about where you're at uh, anymore. He wants to change your viewpoint. Uh, he wants to change how you see things. Uh, he wants you to look at things a little differently. He doesn't want you to look at sickness and be intimidated. Uh, he wants you to look at sickness and say, from up here, that doesn't look that bad. Uh, he wants you to look at heartache and say, from up here, my God, that's where those elders lived, Brother Bounds. They lived in that heavenly dimension. That's why they could look at things and they did not get worried because they were seeing it from a different perspective. If you would allow God today, he will change your perspective. They say, come on, Acre. I feel a shift. I feel a change. Come on, lift your voice. Let him change your perspective. Let him change your point of view. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, lift your voices. Lift your voices. Come up. I hear the beckoning of heaven. Come up. I hear the call of the throne. Come up. Come up. Come on, come on, come on, press here. I'm asking this church, if you're not at your feet, would you stand and would you lift your hands? And would you begin to lift your voice right now? Come on. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Come on. Watch. Uh, they go marching around Jericho with revelation. The walls are going to fall. That's the revelation that was given to Joshua. The walls are going to fall. 
The walls are going to fall. And they're just marching in silence and in obedience. Do it. What the man of God said to do. The walls are going to fall. The walls are going to fall. They're just marching. They're just marching. They're just marching. Revelation dimension. They're just marching. They're just marching. But then one day something shifts. And when it shifts, it's this. At the sound of the long blast of the trumpet, the man of God is going to release. And watch. Now it's your turn to lift your voice and shout. And what happens? The walls come flat. God, and now listen, I, th this is just kind of the way I feel like the, like the earth kind of opened up and it changed the perspective where they got on top of what was trying to hold them back, uh, but it had to all come from a place of shifting uh, where they weren't just believing and they started acting, uh, where they weren't just saying, all right, I believe it's going to happen, uh, but something had to shift within them where they couldn't just believe it was going to happen. They had to produce something with their lips uh, for it to come to pass. I thank God for your men of God. He's got the revelation and the insight uh, for what God wants to do in this place uh, and in this city. But you hear me. Uh, the moment is shifting uh, where it can't just be the pulpit declaring revelation. Uh, there has to be a moment uh, of impartation uh, where now you lift your voice and say, if the walls are coming down, God's got to use my voice. Uh, if the atmosphere's going to... Come on, lift your voice, shout with a voice of triumph. Come on, come on, come on, they say, hey, come on, anchor, lift your voice. Come on, come on, come on, you feel that? Don't get quiet. Lift your voice, Roshakataha, Ikano Rosha. When you see the heavens open, there's always the angelic near. Wherever the throne is at, the angelic is there. Wherever the throne of God is established, that's where the angels are located. God's been dealing with me on angelic assistance for this end time revival. We don't have what it takes to do this on our own. And God doesn't expect us to do this on our own. In that revelation that John gets to the seven churches, this is what he sees. He says, I, John, I said, I, I see that there are seven golden candlesticks. And then I see seven stars. He said, and then I see Jesus in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks and the seven stars that are in his right hand. The seven golden candlesticks represent the seven churches and the seven stars represents the seven angels to the seven churches. And so the seven churches were all on fire. And as long as a church is on fire, Jesus will be in the midst of it. Now more than ever, the church has got to be on fire. And fire only happens through sacrifice. Ah, but I've seen in the Holy Ghost, this church has made the sacrifice and the fire is here. The fire is residing here, but there's another level to that. And now you see the seven angels in the seven churches. Each church had an angel to aid them in revival. Because God did not intend for them to do it all on their own. And if he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever, if each church had an angelic presence then, why wouldn't this church have an angelic presence now? Lord, we need angelic help in this end time for revival. Loose your angels, oh God. We petition the throne for. I'm telling you, the angels of the Lord are being released to this place. To every seven spirits that are warring against the church, God's going to give an angel to war against the seven spirits. I feel it in the Holy Ghost right now. Those seven things that are trying to combat the church of the Most High God, God's going to give us an angelic help to war against each point of... Come on.
Listen to me. We've got to lose the supernatural. You've got a man of God that believes in the supernatural. And he walks in the supernatural. But if God's going to do what the vision of this church is, it's going to take more than just the ministry operating in the supernatural. It's going to take the people of the Most High God operating in the realms of the supernatural. But that will not happen if you do not allow the throne to be established. I woke up that, that morning, yesterday morning, after I had saw what I saw at camp meeting, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, the throne is being reestablished in this church. I don't know everything that happened, but the only thing that would not allow the throne of God to be fully established is if Seth will was at work. And I feel there's been a shift of self-will that is dying. And when it fully dies, I'm telling you, I see the throne of God. And if his throne is there, the angelic help is there. And if his throne is there, that means that there's greater authority and there's greater dominion in that region. I'm telling you, there's an increase of authority and there's an increase of dominion. There's an increase of it that's coming to this congregation right now. But you've got to change your perspective. You've got to let go of self-will. You cannot allow the congregating of the carnal to pull you away from the work of the Spirit. You've got to say, Lord, I see the heavens open. Release what you want to release. Come on, I feel something shifted right now. Lift your voices. Come on, come on, come on, anchor. Come on, anchor, lift your voices. Come on, Come on, there needs to be a response from the body right now. These altars are open. I think everybody in this place ought to flood to this altar right now. I don't think there should be a person that is physically able that is not in this altar right now. There needs to be a moment of great surrendering in this place right now. 
Yareteleando rosha yarakata yalaba. Hareando roki yaranda laba shekehe. Come on. Come on, a sincere great surrender. A complete surrender. Come on, a surrender of will, of mode, of agenda, of every part of us right now. Come on, that's it, that's it. Let there be a cry unto heaven right now. Come on, the heavens are opening. Come on, there needs to be a sincere, come on, a sincere cry right now. As a sign of surrender, lift your hands. Come on. Come on. Come on, the shift is here if you will surrender. Come on, lift your voice right now. Lift your voice in this altar. There is a breakthrough in the Spirit. Come on, there is a breakthrough in the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 There is a breakthrough. There is a call of repentance. There is a revival in the body. There is a revival in the body. I want you to lift your voice from the earnest, sincere spirit place of your heart right now we have heard from the man of God we have heard from the voice of the Lord not my will not what I want thy will be done 
In the name of Jesus, in the name. We need to press here. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is the moment if you will press here right now. This is the moment if you will press here right now. Come on, church. Come on. There's a quickening. There's a, this is that. Come on. Press here. Shotoranda la bashataha. Come on, we've got to press. We've got to press. Come on, there's some of you redigging some old wells right now. You've got to press here. Come on, that's it. Yes, 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 Jesus. Come on. Come on, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Come on, if it's appropriate and you want to join with the person next to you, do that right now. But we've got to press here. Come on, we've got to press here. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Hallelujah. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, Holy Ghost. Come on, that's it. Come on, that's it. Reando lobo shatayala baha. Come on, press a talabarreke and roseke. Come on, that's it. If you feel led to pray for somebody, do it. If you feel led to lay hands on somebody, do it right now. We've got to press here. Come on, come on, come on. That's it. I feel an opening. Come on, we're about to topple this thing over. Press here. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Reke ando roshataha. He ando roshoto re anda rakataha. Come on, that's it. Hare ando lobo se hatarratalabaha. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, Holy Ghost. Ki arando lobo se hataha. Come on, flow in the Holy Ghost in this altar right now. Flow in the Holy Ghost. I want you to lift your hands 
And I want you to tell the Lord, I want your will in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God's calling us to a revival when he sent this preacher. There's a new level of dimension. New level of dimension that God is calling us to. It will not come without submission or or a a garden of Gethsemane moment where you say, not my will, but thy will be done. That's what's happening in here is you're turning your will over to God and saying, I'm gonna look to the heavens instead of everything that's going wrong on the earth. I'm not gonna look at those that are against me. I'm gonna look at him that is for me, the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm telling you, God is telling this church, look up. Redemption draweth nigh. Redemption draweth nigh. For the Zion Gators, you know how much this message is in the Holy Ghost after our conversation the last three days. Am I right? He has been in the study, study. Uh, I told him, I leaned over in the car, headed to Maryland, D.C. District to preach a camp meeting this past Thursday and Friday. I leaned over him. We were traveling together, and I said, I feel like you need to study the seven churches of Asia. Am I right? He said, he said, Pastor, he said, that's exactly where I'm studying right now. Well, I was out of town. The Lord gave me a revelation of the seven spirits that oppose the people of God. In Deuteronomy chapter seven, he said, when you come to the promised land, you're going to face the Amorites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Hivites, the Girgashites, the Perizzites, and the, uh, if I named them all, I'm not sure, but there are seven of those. He said, I'm going, he said they are mightier than you. He said, but I'm gonna give you the power to possess the land. I'm gonna allow you to overcome them. It came to my attention, it came to my attention is that in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, that they fought battles with swords and spears and shields. They were physical battles in the Old Testament. Swords, bows, and arrows. How many know that is true? David and Goliath. A sword, a shield, a slingshot. There were physical battles fought in the Old Testament. So what happened physically in the Old Testament happened spiritually in the New Testament. So when they came to take Jesus from the Lord, or or take Jesus from his disciples, Simon Peter grabbed his sword and cut Malchus's ear off, and the Lord said, put up your sword. That's not how we fight now. It's no longer a battle that's physical. It's now a battle that's spiritual. So the New Testament teaching was simply this. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down every imagination which exalted itself against God. The battle that you fight now is not going to be with a sword. It's going to be in your mind and in your emotions. For the kingdom of God is now thee. The kingdom of God is in you. I feel this right now in the Holy Ghost for we are not given to a spirit of fear but of love, power, and a sound mind. He said in the book of Ephesians, but the tie he said in Ephesians chapter six, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and the rulers of the darkness of this world. Put ye on the whole armor of God. You've done all to stand, just keep standing. That's why some of you are suffering in your emotions because you don't understand spiritual authority, spiritual warfare. But he said, if you engage in the war in my name, I'm gonna give you victory over the spirit of fear. I'm gonna give you the victory over the spirit of pride. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring my phone. I I just got notes on this. You are in the Holy Ghost. God has sent him to confirm what God has put in my spirit. I know it doesn't match our church calendar. I don't even know what his calendar is. But tomorrow night we're going to be having church at Monday and Tuesday. I don't even know what that's going to mess up. I hadn't consulted anybody, but I'm the pastor. (laughs) Listen to this. We're going to push this thing over. The Gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of hell. I know it gets a little awkward when we have a guest preacher, 
And he starts preaching and there's a kickback. He said, quit focusing on your flesh. Start looking at what God's wanting to do. I'm telling you, this is the revival that's going to bring your family home. This is the revival that's going to cause cancer to be healed. This is the revival that's going to cause diseases to leave the church. When you study the Amorites, they represent a spirit of pride or glory seeker. When you study the Hittites, they represent the spirit of fear. The parasites, the parasites represent inadequacy, the spirit of inadequacy, which is the spirit of this city. Not good enough. Don't fit in. Not sure if I'm accepted. Not sure if I have enough to ever become what God wants me to come. That's not a personality. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. Canaanites represent addiction and lust. That's where pornography comes from. It's from the Canaanite people. They, it, it is projected. You, you become addicted. That's why you have nicotine and things like that. It's not, it's not just a chemical issue. It is a spirit of bondage. Hivites, content, earthly inherent, or content, earthly inherent. You're just mediocrity. I just, I'm just going to settle. Call of God, but feel to settle. Why? Because a spirit always has an atmosphere. If you don't believe that, you'll never understand the presence of God. When this presence of God moves, you're going to feel peace. You're going to feel the fruit of the spirit, the nine fruits of the spirit, which combat the nine works of the flesh. That's why you can be dealing with hell and chaos. And they started singing that song today in the presence of Jehovah. But when the Spirit of the Lord comes in, bereavement moves out, chaos moves out. Why did I feel this way? Why did I feel the joy? You had all kinds of mess in your world, but one service, you begin to feel the peace because in His presence is fullness of joy. I'm telling you, when the... Brother Godwin preached, I think it was 2008. He said, when God enthrones himself, and when God enthrones himself, it pushes back all seven spirits. It pushes back things. That's why we had 35 converted drug dealers in this church at that time, because when God enthroned himself, they, the devil just had to let go and run. I'm telling you, there's another great harvest. The saints are gonna get their joy back. They're peace back, they're called back, their desire to pray back because the heavens are open. The heavens are open. The heavens are open. You know what the spirit of the Jebusites were? I don't want anybody telling me what to do. Rebellion. I don't want anybody telling me. I don't want anybody saying what I got to do or not do. It's a spirit. Gets in homes. I don't need a boss. I don't need any authority. I'm just going to tell you right now, not everybody likes it, but you can't be submitted to a God you can't see if you can't be submitted to a, a person you can. That's why the first commandment with promise was in the home, and that was for children to be obedient to their parents and honor thy parents, and your days shall be long upon the earth. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't want to trust myself and be my own pastor. I need somebody to lead me from the word of the Lord that I can submit to spiritual authority. Angels show up. Angels will show up in your life when you submit and devils will show up in your life when you rebel. That's right. Samuel came to Saul and he said to Saul, boy, I feel a witness of the spirit right now. He came to Saul, Samuel came to Saul and he said, don't you realize that obedience is better than sacrifice? That the spirit of rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft? Rebellion will always attract witchcraft. A non-submitted spirit will always attract witchcraft. It's a spirit. That's why Saul ended up in a witch's house. Because submission to authority. Young people, you better listen to me. Honoring your mother and your father will bring angels into your room. But when you rebel, you're going to invite other spirits. You're going to start battling depression of the mind, issues in your emotions, because when a spirit comes in, you're going to feel the nature of that spirit. That's why our hospital floors are full of people trying to find out what's going on in their mind and their emotions. Because they're entertained. Listen, the only place I find the word entertain in the scriptures is to entertain angels. If you can entertain the angels of God, you can also entertain fallen angels. 
And the way you entertain fallen angels is through disobedience to his word, rebellion to spiritual authority, and when a demonic spirit comes in, you're going to feel the nature of that spirit. It's going to be hopelessness. It's going to be fear. Anxiety. It's the truth. And the body of Christ right now is suffering at some level because they don't understand what warfare is. God will allow you to feel the opposing spirit as an intercessor so you can cast it out. Quit owning it. I'm going to tell you a word from this church. You need to get in the spirit as you don't even know this, but God would have been dealing with me on Thursday night. I listened to a a message from Ron Libby about when he was on the Isle of Patmos, you know what he did in a trial of his life? He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Instead of looking at the chaos around me, it caused me to look at the heaven that's above me. And this is a word from the Lord for this church. You need to get your eyes off of the problem and get your eyes on the prophecy. Get your eyes on what the devil's doing and get your eyes on what God is doing. I'm telling you, there's a revival. I hear the chains breaking. I hear the chains breaking. I'm telling you, there's going to be so many people delivered here of lifestyles and depression and emotions and bondage and addiction because greater is he that is with me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. You know what the Gergeshites represent? They represent unbelief, a lesser doctrine, a lesser way. Unbelief just to settle. And I'm going to tell you, we are going to bind those in this revival. And God is going to give us deliverance. The Lord's already here. But God's not wanting to do something on Sundays. He's wanting to do something in your home. He's wanting, that's why there was a kickback. The kickback is because we can believe it on Sunday, but I don't know if I can believe it on Monday. I believe it when we gather together, but you, you, you have powerful church on Sunday and go home to hell on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I'm going to tell you why. Because you're entertaining the spirit you're supposed to have authority over. You should never, I'm going to tell you, the church should have never got infatuated with Hollywood. Infatuated with agnostics and atheists and haters of God. Entertainment has caused the church to let people in their house they would never let in their home. And we wonder why our children struggle. And we take them out of church. Listen, you take them out of church and you take them out of church and you say, Pastor, I'll see you in 12 weeks when football season's over. I have never had a kid to return that the parent told me, I'll see you at the end of football season. You know why? Because you made an idol and replaced the Lord in the house. You say, Pastor, you're being strong. Well, you don't need patty cake preaching. You don't need something to make you feel good about doing wrong. Spirit of mediocrity. I'm going to tell you, God doesn't play second fiddle to anybody. He's either the first of all or he's not at all. But when he becomes number one in your life, somebody shout hallelujah. Why is it the church has embraced what the first church burnt? We should not. I'm telling you, the Lord's calling this church. to. I woke up Friday morning. I woke up Friday morning. And the Lord spoke to me when I woke up. And the Lord showed me. He said, a polluted home will bring a diluted revelation. And the reason you can have great church on Sunday but suffer through the week is because you've got idols in your house that you know don't match the convictions in your heart. Lift your hands right now in this room. There's an old-fashioned revival coming to this church. There's an old-fashioned revival in this church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I don't want my house to be godless. Somebody say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Not my will, but thine be done. Church was never supposed to be a checkbox. It's what I got done. I did my thing for the Lord this week. I'm going to go live my life now. Oh, no. And he walks with me. Felt good to get the Holy Ghost today, didn't it? He's going to be baptized today. Amen. Do we have anybody else going to be baptized today? We got another one going to be baptized today. Come on. 
That's a product of a praying church. That's a product of a praying people. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want them to get ready. Uh, I want, amen, Pastor Castle can baptize today. And uh, Thy corn, thy wine, thine oil, the increase of thy kind, the flocks of thy sheep, in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Can I just have a couple more minutes? Thou shalt be blessed above all people. That was weak. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. You know why? Because you're going to live according to his word. You're going to live according to his law. You're going to live according, amen, what God says, not my will. We're not going to look like, act like, talk like, live like everybody else. We're going to live according to his word. And God said, I'm going to bless you among all people. There should not be male, nor, male or female barren among you or among your cattle. The Lord will take away from thee, are you ready? All sickness. And will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. I believe that's a word for the end time church. I believe we're going to have such a revival that God's going to cleanse the church of all mental maladies. He's going to cleanse the church of all sicknesses. I believe when they come in, they're going to be delivered. You know why? It's an open heaven. It's an open heaven. I believe rain is going to fall. People are going to be healed. Lives are going to be touched. People are going to be saved. Do you believe it? Clap your hands and shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands right now and say, I want to be a part of the greatest thing going on in the end time. I want to be a part of it. I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. 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 The angels of the Lord are here. The angels of the Lord are here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord has went to this church. What are you going to do with it? I want you to lift your hands and say, God, I want you to tailor it to my situation, my life. Tell me to fast, I'll fast, pray, I'll pray, I'll do whatever you want. Hallelujah. I see a breakthrough in our families. Shackles fall off. Mental illness healed. Insomnia healed. Bitterness, offenses. Cancer. There's healing coming through this room right now. The outpouring is here. Just lift your hands all over the building and receive of the Lord. The Lord is opening heaven upon us. There's healing happening right now. There's healing taking place right now. Go ahead and lift your voice. There's healing happening right now. There's a multi-generational, multi-ethnicity revival. There's a rebuilding of the altar. There's a rebuilding of the altar. 
Jesus' name. Come on, lift your hands. Somebody's going to be baptized right now in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful. Lord, baptize them with your spirit. Baptize them with your spirit. Come on, something's happening. Y'all feel that? That is the Holy Ghost. That is the Holy Ghost. That is the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That's just one of many. There's so many that God's going to touch and save. Aren't you glad for one right now? Amen. Would you rejoice with me? Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands and shout. We're so thankful another name's been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's it. That's it. The walls are coming down. Victory is happening. The walls, come on, lift your voices and shout right now. There's something happening in the building. There's something happening in the hall. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. There's going to be a great harvest. But a great harvest can't be given until the church is ready and equipped. Because an end time harvest, it takes everybody. Somebody shout, it takes everybody to gather in an end time harvest. Look at your neighbor said, it's talking about you, everybody. An end time harvest takes everybody.
changing her life as he changed my life. So powerful. Anybody else here today going to be baptized? Anybody else here today going to be baptized? Sister Janice, it's the will of the Lord you were here today. It's so good to see you. You are a walking miracle. We're so thankful. Brother Brian, lay hands on your mom. The Spirit of the Lord's coming over her right now. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Repent and be what? Who? Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I do think one of the things about the Apostolic Church and our doctrine, we believe in supernatural healing of God. The miraculous power of God. We believe angels walk among us. We believe in spiritual warfare too. What you were feeling today when the preacher was preaching was just flesh because it's just summertime. We get mediocre. How many know it's true? How many want to press through this thing and see God do a breakthrough? Amen. The heavens are open. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, we're going to meet here and Tuesday night. And Tuesday night. I want everybody to come that can. And uh, it's going to be powerful what God is doing. I feel a witness of that. And uh, I feel a witness of that. How many feel a witness of that? Would you wave your hands? God's going to do something mighty. Invite some people. Fast tomorrow. Amen. Amen. I feel like there's something I need to say. Where's my wife? Is she in the nursery? She's gone. Here's what we're going to pray for tomorrow. There's an epidemic of, of mental illness, emotional things. We, we have believed God could heal the heart, didn't understand the mind. But if God can heal the heart, He can heal the mind. Where are strongholds? First one answer gets free re- gets early recess tomorrow. <laughs> strongholds are in the mind. When he talked about strongholds, he said, casting down every imagination. Do not let the devil build a stronghold in your mind. Cast it down. If it didn't line up with God's word, you don't have peace about it, don't receive it or accept it. There's a revival where God is going to heal the mind believe that. Amen. Lift your hands for a moment. Now we're going to pray about that tomorrow. But right now I want you to pray God let there be a revival. pray for our preacher before he goes. Let's ask God to give him strength. Amen. Let's pray over him and his wife. He is poured out. He is worn in the spirit. Would you pray for Brother Morgan? Thank you, Lord, for Brother Morgan. I pray you'll pour everything back into him which he's poured out. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's put the Lord first and have revival. Can you say amen? Clap your hands. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.